There is a three megapixel camera to record images and videos along with the GNSS data. Hand grips are on both sides of the pack. Under one hand grip, there are four connectors protected. They are external power, two USBs, and Ethernet connectors. Under the other hand grip, four connectors are protected for four of the following five options. External GNSS antenna, external UHF antenna, one pulse per second timing signal, event marker, and external frequency input output. On both sides, there are also eyelets for shoulder strap and mounting options that we will discuss later. On the bottom of the receiver, there are three connectors for mounting Triumph VS on a variety of tripods, monopods, poles, and machines. Also in the bottom, there is a high-resolution camera for continuous alignment to the mark and recording the alignment offset along with the GNSS data. Also, in the bottom, there are two high-quality speakers for audio signals and voice. And in front, there is the display and keys. It is at 800 by 480 pixels. Display, as I said, this is four times more pixels than iPhone. It has touch panels which can be used with fingers or with stylus. You can also use the keys on the sides if you prefer. Two LEDs on the right side show the status of battery level and charging status. The LED on the left shows the sleep mode, which is implemented to save battery power. Also in front, there is a microphone to record audio files along with the GNSS data. On the bottom right side, there is a headset jack. This was a brief description of uh, Triumph VS hardware. Now let's see what have we done for its software. Let us start with the home screen. On top of this screen, as in all other screens, there are 10 active icons. Each icon gives an overall indication of an item, and then when clicked, opens another screen which shows details. From left to right, there are Ethernet, Wi-Fi, UHF, GSM, GPRS, and Bluetooth. On the right side, there are satellites icon, current map icon, current settings icon, display and speaker icon, and battery status icon. You can click on each icon and see details. For example, the satellites icon, when clicked, shows 20 satellites are being tracked. If you click this icon, you will see the satellite details, which shows satellites names, azimuth, elevation angle, health status, and their up to five signal strengths. Or you can click the battery icon to see the history of battery performance. Also see temperature in different sections of the receiver. This is a great tool to see information in different environmental conditions. On the main sections of the home page, there are many icons. Let's focus on the settings icon. Clicking the settings, you'll access screens to program the operation of the receiver for a variety of applications. Then you can store settings in an unlimited number of files. You can also assign five sets of settings 
to five function buttons on top of the receiver for instant reloading of the settings. Let's see some examples. For example, I will program the receiver to track GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and SPAS satellites. Then I select the receiver to receive RTK corrections via UHF, and I specify the format to be RTCM3. I also limit elevation angles of satellites to five degrees. In the duration screen, I can specify the duration to be manual, timed, scheduled, or accuracy dependent. Here, I specify the duration to be until accuracy of better than three centimeters is achieved. In the communication screen, I can set up all of my communication channels of UHF, Bluetooth, LAN, GSM, GPRS, and Wi-Fi. For example, for UHF, I select the frequency, output power, and UHF protocols. In the antenna section, I can enter antenna height and specify the type of external antenna if an external GNSS antenna is connected. In photos and voice, I can specify bottom camera's resolution, also the memory location to record images, and also how often to record. I select the bottom camera to record an image once at start and once at the end of the survey. I can do similar with the top camera. I can also program the voice recorder to automatically record my voice for 20 seconds when I start the operation. I can also program that all the operations start with five seconds of delay after I click the start button to align myself better. I will skip other settings for now. After I program Triumph VS for my particular application, I can store them in a file and later reload them when I need them. I can record unlimited number of settings in such files. I also can assign five of my settings to the five function buttons on the top of Triumph VS. I save my settings in a file and I also assign it to function button F1. As another example, I program the receiver to act as the base station and transmit RTCM messages every second via Ethernet. I program Ethernet parameters, antenna, photo and voice settings, and then store these settings in another file and assign the settings to the F2 function button. Now each time I push the F1 button, my receiver will instantly load my F1 settings. The same with F2 through F5 buttons. You can program a variety of scenarios and then recall them instantly. Now that we have programmed our Triumph VS, let's see how easy it is to use it in the field in variety of applications. In the field, all you need to do is to turn the receiver on, push the desired function button to make sure that your settings are what you want, then push the action button in front of the receiver. In action screen, again, active icons are on the top. All you need to know in doing your projects are shown in the action screen. I'll try to explain them briefly. On the top left is the timer box. In manual duration, it shows the elapsed time. In timed operation, which is the case here, it shows the elapsed time and the remaining time. Below the timer box is the satellites box for GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, WAS, EGNOS, and QZSS. 
below each flag on the left side 